Turn to page number 81, draw me near. To thy precious bleeding side, draw me near. Number 81, and when you get there, go ahead and stand on your feet. We'll sing it out, amen. Yeah. Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's see. On the third verse. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer nearer blessed lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer 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 blessed lord to thy precious bleeding side on the last there are depths of love that i cannot know till i cross the narrow sea there are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. You may be seated, folks. All right. Turn over to number 87. And uh, when do you want? Tria, Tria right now? A after this hymn. Okay. All right. Okay. Number 87. More about Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number 87. <clears throat> more about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. <coughs> His saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more about Jesus, let me learn, more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. And alas, more about Jesus on his throne, Riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Amen. All right. First, first. Uh, that uh, you, babe? Okay. All right. 
<laughs> I was looking at her. <laughs> You will turn to page 144. What a day that will be. Amen. Number 144. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden shore, what a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. 
There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. And if you would. Yes. 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 Thank you, Sister Monica. God bless you. Sister Tammy, if you will, render a song for us. God bless you. I've been on my way to heaven for a long, long time. And many things have happened that's clouded up my mind. But I am more determined to walk the narrow way. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm going to ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I want to hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. I've been through the lowest valleys, I've climbed the highest hills, I've known the joys of living in the center of God's will, I've watched the angels come and take my loved ones home to stay, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I want to hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gates, and I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Sorry. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I want to hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate, and I've got more to go to heaven for than I had 
yesterday. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Congregation that's amen. Y'all were singing. From the top of your lungs, it sounded like to me, and I like that. I think we ought to sing. When we come to church, we ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord and, and let God know that we do appreciate what he has done for us. And, and uh, God's good, and he, he's good to us all the time, even though we all break down and our bodies have problems and everything else, but God's good. And I'm glad one of these days it'll all be over. We won't have to worry about our bodies and them breaking down and falling apart <laughs> and sometimes they fall apart and we don't have any parts to put back so uh, but uh, but anyway I'm glad to have brother Skipper here it's good to see the Risingers here and we appreciate y'all coming uh, to visit here tonight and we're thankful for that I would let you speak but I don't want you to because you're long-winded and and, <laughs> and we, we <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> hey, uh, isn't it good to come to church and laugh? You know, I think it's wonderful to be able to come to church and laugh at each other and laugh at yourself and not take yourself so serious, you know. And But the Lord is good, and I'm glad he's good today. And, and uh, so, Brother Skipper, you come speak to us tonight. Amen. Mark chapter 4 in your Bible, Y'all please. Y'all pray for him as he comes. By yes, the way, sir. you almost got in on that song. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Your mic was on. And I oh, was it? All, was all, it? All of a sudden, I, I was d- deep, dark yeah, that's voice, and I looked at Tammy and said, what is that coming out of there? All right. And then I looked over at him, and he was singing with us. <laughs> there, is a, there is a great story. I was, I was talking to Brother Williams earlier today, and, and uh, he said he's from Galax, Virginia, and I had preached down around that area. A number of times there's a very well-known church in that area in uh, white plains or mount area north carolina white plains baptist church and there's a preacher down there for years that was just legendary his name was carl lackey and uh i never had the privilege to meet brother lackey but uh amen he's an unusual i've heard him preach a number of times you know on tape and whatnot but but uh and so I, I preached at the church when, after he was already gone on to be with the Lord, there's a guy named Bill Tucker that was there for a number of years, and I was privileged to preach there. But I was talking to one of Brother Tucker's grandsons, and we were talking about things that happen because he happened to run the sound in the church. And there's always that fear that when you have a lapel mic on, that something is going to be said or something's going to happen that is going to be really awkward. And uh, <laughs> Carl Lackey, Brother Lackey, got done teaching Sunday school and went into the men's room and left his lapel on. And if you're married to an old man, you know sometimes what happens. And he said, oh, bless God, just pee all over myself. And it was all over the sound, 400-seat <laughs> auditorium, and the sound man's diving for the board, man. <laughs> so, Hallelujah. Turn me off when I'm not up here, man. Don't turn the mic on. You guys want it on. I'd rather have it off, but then I'll forget to turn it on. So, amen. Well, what a blessing, man. Good congregational singing. I uh, was in a church recently, and this reminds me of that. When I was pastoring in Missouri, we had an old-fashioned singing school. I had, a, had an old public school music teacher that had gotten saved, and, and we, we did a week-long singing school, and we learned... Some of y'all don't, don't fall out with me. The, the, the good song books have shape notes in them because us dummies don't know how to read music, but we can, I, can look at a, I can look at a triangle or a square or whatever. You know, the, the, the old church hymnal had shape notes. We learned, we learned four-part harmony. We took a week, and it was a really well-attended meeting, and uh, we would sing Sister Monica for sometimes 45 minutes. And, uh, and we had a church of about, I don't know, between 80 and 100 you know, depending on who showed up when, 
And uh, man, we love to sing. And I, I'll be honest with you, man, it prepares our heart Amen. for the preaching of the Word of God. I was telling, I was telling Sister Tammy that song she just sang. I got saved in 1977, and I, I've always liked music, so I had a pretty extensive collection of music that I no longer ought to listen to. Do you get that memo? <laughs> and uh, my dad, my da we had an old wood-burning stove in the house, and so there was a stump on the side of the house that my dad and I would split the wood on. And I just took all my albums, my old 30, you know, I was back when, Albums were like this big, vinyl. Man, that, that, you, you can't replicate that sound on a CD. They're just something about an old vinyl record. Anyway, <laughs> and I took all those out there on the stump and just obliterated them with a double-bitted axe. Well, I, I hadn't learned the principle of replacement yet, but I knew I needed to get something to listen to or I was going to go back to you know, WLS, which was the big station out of Chicago that played all that music. And uh, so I went down to the local Christian bookstore started looking through the big CDs and found the inspiration <laughs> live in Warner Robins, Georgia, and they sang that song. And I'm telling you, I had that album. I wore that, I wore that vinyl slap out. You know, you know w when you played it so much, you got to start putting pennies on the, on the arm of the amen. <laughs> Y'all remember those days. And uh, anyway, so praise the Lord. That's, those are great memories. And uh, I don't, they, there, there are a few new songs that are being written that are worth something, but that's my opinion, though, anyway. <laughs> Amen. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Appreciate the Lord meet with us this morning. And uh, appreciate you being back with us again tonight. And uh, appreciate the good spirit. Amen. It really is good to be in church where, you know, there, there, there ought to be a place where we can come and just be who we are. Don't have to have our guard up. Sadly, a lot of times that's not church. Amen. Sadly, sometimes the most stressful day of the week is the day when you when you go to church because there's so much turmoil that's going on in inside. And it's just a blessing to be a, at a place where if there is any, I'm just dumb and ignorant, <laughs> fat and happy. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so hallelujah. Verse number 35, Mark chapter number four. Let me ask you if you would to stand. I'm going to I'm going to stand in my heart, but I'm going to sit on my stool. Mark chapter 4. The Bible said, when this, In the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. There were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now I know I'm preaching primarily to Air Force folks, so let me give you a little nautical history. When the ship is full of water, things don't go well, okay? That, yeah. Now, it's like when the airplane is in the air and loses forward momentum, it don't go well. So, so there, there, here's where we're at. The ship, the, the waves have beat into the ship, so that it's now full. Verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, the ship asleep on a pillow, and they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I mean, I'm interested in verse 38. Because the storm is raging, and Jesus is sleeping. And that's always interested me. Listen, I, I know since the last time we met together, which has been not quite a year, but close, some of us have been through some storms. Amen? And if you're like me, most of the time when you're facing something you can't fix, you don't sleep. You lay awake and you're frustrated, and you're worrying, and you're trying to work it out in your mind. And Jesus, in the middle of a storm, is sleeping. And I began to realize, brother, that if he can sleep on a stormy night, there might be something in here to help us do that. So I want to preach on that thought tonight, how to sleep on a stormy night. Would you help me pray? Father, we bow in your presence once again, and Lord, we are grateful and thankful 
Lord, first of all, I want to thank you that we feel your presence here tonight. Lord, that's not something we want to take for granted. <laughs> Lord, I remember hearing the story about the old preacher down in Houston, Texas, Brother Jack Wood, that somebody came to see him, and the secretary said he ain't been out of his office all morning. And that man opened the door, and Brother Jack was sitting back in his office chair looking out the window. When that man walked in the office, Brother, Brother Wood said, Shh, don't run him off. He's been here all morning. Lord, we don't want to run you off. Lord, help us to be careful and be respectful. Lord, I pray that, God, you do something in our hearts tonight that will help us. Lord, we don't know what's ahead, but we know the one who knows what's ahead. Lord, I don't know what my tomorrow brings, but I know who holds tomorrow. And, Lord, that's more than just the words of a song and more than just a pithy little saying. Lord, it's the absolute truth. And so, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd help us tonight. And, Lord, for those here whose life, the, the sea of their life might be calm at the moment, Father, I pray that, God, they'd grab some things that will help them. When they face those uncertain days and those tempestuous winds and those raging seas, Father, we just thank you, God, again. Lord, thank you for the, thank you for the promise, Lord, that one, one day this, this too will pass. And, Lord, I pray that you'd bless now and speak to our hearts. And, Father, for that we'll thank you and we'll praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Now, there's something interesting about those men that Jesus called to himself because they came from a lot of different diversities of background. I don't want to... I don't want to spend a lot of time building the introduction, but, but I want you to understand that, that there was only a few of these men that were men that were brought up on the sea. There were some that were tax collectors. There were some a men that came from a royal family, but several of these men had a fishing background, and so they were familiar with the sailing of a vessel and the catching of fish. And, and so as Jesus is ministering in this place called Capernaum, on the northern part of the Sea of Galilee, he says to his disciples in our text, let us pass over unto the other side. So they dispersed the multitude that had gathered there to hear him preach. And, and you can understand this, that it would be much faster and much more direct to sail across the body of water than it would be to circumnavigate the shore. And so it was a trip, preacher, that they probably took on a fairly regular basis. The interesting thing of note here, and, and you know this if you know anything about the life of our Savior, Jesus was the only one of the bunch that didn't need a boat. Yeah. Right? That's right? I've never seen a body of water, and I, I, I like boats. There's something about me. I, my last name is Skipper. It's not spelled S-K, but that's the Dutch spelling of Skipper. It's just like school or schooner. It's S-C-H. And, and there's just something that's always been in me. I have always been fascinated with water. We got to Ruby Tuesdays last night, and I looked past the parking lot. Immediately, I see the bay out here, and they're just, I just, I love water. There's something that I've always been fascinated about. And, 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 and so I'm, I'm, I've never looked at a body of water preacher that needed to be crossed, that didn't have a bridge, and think, I'll just, I'll just walk. I mean, I'm pretty buoyant. Oh, you didn't have to, you hurt my feelings now. <laughs> I mean, listen, it used to be I could swim down to the bottom of a 12-foot pool. Now I, I float like a cork, amen? Listen, if I was on a Titanic, I'd never have to worry about drowning in the North, the North Atlantic. But, but, but the bottom line is, listen, we all understand if we're going to cross a body of water, we've got to have a vessel. And Jesus didn't need that. But they get into the boat, they board the vessel, and I don't think it would have been uncommon for there to have been some fishing done during that trip, I don't know a single fisherman preacher that when given the chance is not going to cast the net or throw a line. Amen. In fact, I've got some friends that love fishing and several of them have got the t-shirt that says, that says, I can't come in to work today because my arm is in a cast. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and so, so that being the case, I can, I can see Peter and Andrew and James and John and Philip. Those were the ones that were, amen, from a seafaring kind of family. I can see them bringing on board the nets and the ropes and the gear that would be needed to catch fish. Others brought sails and the necessary things that were going to be used to motivate the vessel and to navigate the vessel. But there's something here in verse 38. A lot of times we read it, but we don't think this through. 
Look at verse 38. This is very interesting. The Bible said, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a what? You ever wonder where that pillow came from? I mean, this ain't the carnival fun ship. So, you, I mean, you ain't got stewards making, you know, making towel animals on your bed. I mean, listen, this, we're talking a Galilean fishing vessel. We're talking, a, we're talking a vessel that is purpose-built. It's not for pleasure. It is not for recreation. It is a work vessel. If there's anything that is not, that is going to be, y'all remember when we were kids, we used to play that game, one of those things does not belong here? If there's anything that doesn't belong on a, on a working Galilean fishing vessel, it's a pillow. So I began to wonder, Jeff, where did the pillow come from? And the only conclusion you can draw logically, Brother JP, is Jesus must have brought it. Now, think that through a minute. Because none of these disciples knew what was ahead, but Jesus did. <laughs> Amen. And he's not worried about the storm. He's not worried about the wind. He's not worried about the waves. Amen. He is, now listen, we talked this morning and we don't understand a lot of things about the, 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 the humanity of Christ and the deity of Christ and how that all connects together. But we know this, that humanly speaking, he had the same, the same needs we had. He got tired. He got hungry. Amen. He he often sat out. Amen. There were there were the, the same kind of the same kind of things we deal with. He dealt with, and yet Jesus has got a pillow. And while others are bringing sailing gear and fishing gear, Jesus brings sleeping gear. I got to thinking about that because the Bible tells us in verse number thirty-seven said there arose, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to picture this in my mind. Is this Galilean fishing vessel that is an open vessel? It's not a, it's not a large vessel. It might be as wide maybe as this auditorium, maybe twice as long. It's not a big vessel. It's not made for rough water. It's made for, it, it's, got a, it's got a high bow and a high stern, but low gunnels so they can cast the net and draw them back in. So it's not built for rough water. And again, when, when the waves beat into the ship, the buoyancy of that ship is compromised. And if something doesn't happen quickly, that ship is going under. And yet in the middle of the storm, Jesus is asleep. And it amazes the disciples. And so I began to look at the text and I realized, ladies and gentlemen, that pillow is an interesting concept. We understand, we understand basically the purpose of a pillow is to make uncomfortable things comfortable, right? Now, again, I know regardless of what the world tries to get us to believe, there are only two genders, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. We shouldn't even have to say that, but we need to, we need to stake that ground out again. Listen, and, and I know that the two genders that are present in this room look at things differently, right? Amen. Listen, I look at a pillow, and I look at a pillow, brother, as some place to comfort my behind if it's hard or comfort my head if I'm reclining. My wife doesn't see pillows that way. She sees pillows as decoration. Yeah. Am I right? Am I right about it? Yeah. All the men in here can say amen. Listen, listen, listen. We, we, got, we got this new motor coach. And if you, if you drove to our motor coach tonight, since in order to be able to get in the bed and use the one pillow that I'm going to use to pillow my head, I got to throw seven on the floor. Am I right? Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven are going on the floor. They're not there. They're there. Brother, Brother Clark, they are there for no other reason than decoration. They serve absolutely no purpose at all other than make the bed look good when the good-looking thing's not in the bed. That was sort of arrogant, wasn't it? But anyway. <laughs> so I got to thinking, okay. So Jesus is using the pillow, amen, for, 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 for rest. And I began to look at this text and I realized, amazingly enough, there are seven pillows right here in this text that you and I can use 
when we face the storms of life. Let me give them to you quickly. Look at verse number 35. They're all going to start with the letter P, so you won't, so you, hopefully you'll be able to remember them. Look at the Bible. The Bible said, in the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, let me, let me just ask you the obvious question. Where did he say they were going? Did the storm change that? The first pillow you and I have that we can use when we face the storms of life, Brother Williams, is the pillow of his promises. And man, I'm thankful for the promises of God. And ladies and gentlemen, can I just remind you, the storms of life and the trials of life and the winds of life and the turmoil of life do not change his promises. What's going on in this world, amen, the fact, that, the fact that this world seems to be losing their bearings, and yet, as I said this morning, amen, it's not falling apart, it's falling right into place. But ladies and gentlemen, God's promises are always true. Amen. He said they were going to the other side, and guess where they're going to go? Storm or no storm. They're going to the other side. Amen. Let me give you the second thing. Quickly look at verse 36. The Bible said, and when they had sent away the multitude, he took them even as he was in the ship. Let me give you the second thing. Aren't you thankful for the pillow of his presence? Amen. <laughs> we probably all learned as a child. With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm, smile at the storm. Smile at the storm with Christ in my vessel. I can smile at the storm as we go sailing on. I think that's how it goes. Listen, aren't you thankful? I know that's great singing, and, and I'll, 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 me and Logan will sing next time. <laughs> pray, by the way, pray for Logan. Uh, Logan <laughs> Logan's a good kid. First time away from home. If, if, if that young man ain't on the spectrum of autism, they're in a cow in Texas. Amen. <laughs> Good young man, super intelligent, but uh, The, the point I'm trying to make is, listen, I'm thankful he's in my ship. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm thankful, preacher, when I got saved, he took up residence. I was thinking this morning. I can't remember. Somebody, somebody said something about some of the old songs. And Brother JP, I, I spent more days in the hospital than I ever care to spend anymore. And that's one of my big concerns about going back north for these tests. They're going to stick me back in there. But because that's the last place I want to go. Sick people go to hospitals. Amen. <laughs> and uh, and I, I know I probably, I'm sick. But anyway. I, I listen every night at nine o'clock. I just, man, I, I hated to see nine o'clock come because I knew it was going to be a long time till the sun came up. And I remember as a kid, my dad, before we even started going to church regularly, we were living in Macon, Georgia. And every Sunday morning, the Happy Goodman family would come on the television on channel 44 out of Macon. That was back when you had. As you were saying, rabbit ears, who, who was I talking to? Had rap, amen. That's back when you had rabbit ears and amen, your remote was, hey, Phil, change the channel. Amen. <laughs> amen. Had a piece of aluminum foil on the rabbit ear. Amen. Y'all remember those days? Man, I, you, you just, just make sure my mic's off when I'm not up here. Amen. But, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, and, uh, and man, my dad would listen to Vestal Goodman. And I, man, I remember a song. There was, I, I, was, I was having a really difficult night. And, and I, I realized that a lot of times when the, when the sun goes down, man, there are, there are more, listen, I don't say this to freak you out, but there are more beings in this room than you and I can see. Okay, I want you to understand that. We, 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 amen. There is a spirit realm that we cannot see. Remember when, remember when, uh, who was it said, Lord, open his eyes and he saw the angels camp round about. So, but man, in that hospital, it just seemed to be, at night, it seemed to be particularly difficult and dark. And I was, I was listening to some music one night, Sister Monica, and just trying to calm my spirit down. And, and man, Vestal Goodman came on and started singing, God walks the dark hills, the ways, the byways. <laughs> 
I can't sing it like Vestal, and I'm not even going to try. Yeah, I know I can't, Barbara. You don't have to shake your head over there. But, <laughs> but you know what I realized? I realized he walks the dark halls. Amen. 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 Yeah. And man, I'm so thankful for a Savior that's close yeah. and a Savior that cares yeah. and a Savior that, amen, just the little things. I was telling Logan on the phone. I mean, listen, God, when he got up here and testified that he'd been struggling a bit, that didn't surprise me. It surprised me that he'd say something. But he, he didn't say anything to me about that. But I didn't find it surprising at all that at the moment of his struggle, two weeks into a new duty station, that God has me call him and invite him to church. And, that, and God used that to bring him back to where he needed to be. And I hopefully, hopefully he stays there. Amen. But I got to think, <laughs> isn't it amazing that God cares enough about us to care about a young boy it's away from home and away from a bad situation yeah. on the spectrum of autism. And yet puts him on the heart of a preacher. And that's not to my credit. That's the Lord's credit. Amen. But man, I'm glad he, I'm, I'm thankful for his presence. Yeah. And man, I'm thankful when I feel his presence. And I'm not going to tell you that I always do. But man, I'm thankful when I do. Amen. Let me give you the next thing. Look at verse number 36. It's all right here in the text. The Bible said in the last part of that verse, and there were also with him other little ships. <laughs> Can I, can I just, one of, the, one of the things the devil tries to get us to buy into is the idea that we're all by ourselves. When I was a kid growing up, Brother, Brother Lev, before we, again, before we were going to church faithful and regular, I hadn't even got saved yet. My mom's dad, my grandpa on my mom's side was a sportsman. He loved hunting and fishing. And again, this was before we were going to church. And back in that day, which would have been the, Amen, late 60s, early 70s, on Sunday afternoon at about 5.30 or 6.30, depending on what time zone you were in, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom was on. And I'm telling you, brother, the world would stop rotating when Mutual, I mean, it didn't matter what else was going on that day. We were all going down to the family room. We was going to watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And Marlon Perkins is there narrating, and Jim was the guy that was always out doing dumb stuff, right? <laughs> Right. And I and I remember one time when they were they were out in the out in the plains of, of, of uh, Africa, just outside of Mount Kilimanjaro. And they were they were watching a pride of lions and they were hunting. And boy, they'd chase a pack of gazelle or a pack of herd animals. And they'd always rather do the same thing. They'd single out one that was young or one that was old or one that was injured. And they'd separate him from the rest of the pack. There, listen, there's something about a herd mentality. Amen. We, we heard a lot about it during COVID or we probably should have heard more, but they talked about herd immunity and some people bristled at that comment. Yeah. Y'all remember when we were kids and your kid and you get chicken pox. And so your mom would invite everybody over to the, to the house. We'd have it just to get it over with. I'm not saying that would be a great idea with COVID because I don't want, not want everybody to have what I had, but, but I'm telling you, there comes a, there, there's something about that. And ladies and gentlemen, when we, when, when we stay together, amen, and we don't allow the devil to drive us away, amen, and drive us off by ourselves, listen, I'm thankful for his people. And can I just remind you, you're not alone. I don't care what the devil's told you. I don't care what you thought. There are others of God's, God's people that are on the journey with you. And I got thinking about this. The Bible said and they, were, uh, they were with him other little ships. And so I got to thinking about, okay, so the vessel that Jesus is in, who's in that vessel? Well, you got Peter. You got James. You got John. Now you stop and think about the implications of that. Because when this is being recorded, the epistle of James hadn't been written yet. First and second Peter hadn't been written yet. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John hadn't been written yet. The book of the Revelation hadn't been written yet. He's got way too much invested in what's, in, what's on board that vessel to let that, to let that vessel go under. Right. And can I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that your Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, that we are his epistle. <laughs> Listen, one of the things that keeps me going when I feel horrible is the fact that I'm not going until God says I'm going. It don't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. I'm not going. Listen, I'm, he's not letting me check out of here until my epistle's written. 
Amen? And ladies and gentlemen, can I remind you, he's got somebody that he wants you to reach. He's got somebody he wants your life to impact. And you may not be able to do it the way you thought you could or the way you'd like to. But ladies and gentlemen, can I remind you, he's got a purpose and a plan. And as I said, when we went to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there is a season. Amen. Amen. Look at verse number 38 quickly. The Bible said, and he was in the hinder part of the ship. Now, would you pronounce that hinder or hinder? hinder. Okay, so y'all, y'all, it's pecan, no pecan. <laughs> what other word did I hear that was, oh, uh, uh, there's a roof up above me. Some places say it's roof. <laughs> Amen. I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> those are little regionality things, but. The bottom line is, however you say that word, he's in the back of the boat, right? right? Now, now, most of us, when we're thinking of the vessel that's here, well, it doesn't have a pilot house. It's got a rudder. Yeah. Amen? Yes, and everything that's going to happen that's going to direct that boat and navigate that boat's going to happen at the back of the boat, right? Yes, sir. Where's he sleeping? <laughs> And I got to think, I was thinking about this. Listen, even when he's sleeping, he's in control. And if he's at the helm, there's no need for us to be overwhelmed. There just isn't. And he ain't going anywhere. I'm just telling you, hey, he's in control. And even when it doesn't look like, hey, aren't you thankful? He knows what's going on and he's not worried. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if he's not worried about your tomorrow, then neither should you be. Look at verse 38 again. He's in, the hind, he's in the hinder, hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now, I, I got a sneak suspicion their urgency was a little bit greater than how I just read that. They're probably not just going, uh, we got a problem here, Houston. <laughs> no, no, they're probably a little wound up. They're probably, listen, listen, and I want you to understand, these, this is not, these are not guys that are not familiar, by and large, with the, uh, they've been through storms before, but they haven't been through this one. Right. Amen? Right. And, and listen, every storm you face is different. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes you face a family storm, and amen, it's different than any other storm you've ever faced, and the devil will show up right in the middle of that thing and tell you you're not going to make it. This is going to be really bad. This is not going to end well. Can I just remind you, ladies and gentlemen, hey, if he's still at the helm, it's all going to be okay. But the Bible said, they awake him and and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And I got to thinking about that. I've already given you four pillows. There's the pillow, I didn't give them to you, pillow of his promises, a pillow of his presence, pillow of his people, the pillow of his power, that was the fourth one. This is number five. It's the pillow of prayer. <laughs> Man, aren't you thankful? I remember years ago, Brother Humphreys, I, back when you used to listen to cassette tapes, I, I listened to a cassette tape of a black preacher named S.M. Lockridge. And uh, somebody asked him what SM stood for. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach. <laughs> and he said, well, what happened to Abednego? And he said, my mama said it sounded too much like a bad Negro, so she left that part off. But <laughs> 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 and man, I'm telling you, SM Lockridge, one of those guys, he could just, listen, I love to preach. I really do, but I'm a Caucasian. And on my very best day, I can't preach like a black man can preach. I just can't do it. I don't got that, hmm, hmm, hmm. We need Miss Monica over here on the organ going, zut, zut, amen, <laughs> amen. I'm just telling you. And, and man, S.M. Lockridge is preaching. He's talking, about, he's talking about these people that have God Buddha for a God. And he said, man, if you had God Buddha for a God and you needed God Buddha, amen, you'd have to go get an ox cart and go get God Buddha and bring God Buddha to where you're at. And he said, if God Buddha fell off the ox cart on the journey, you'd have to pick God Buddha up. And he got to, he got to preach. He said, but I don't need a God that i got to pick up. I need a God that can pick me up. I don't need a God that I've got to go to him. I'm glad I've got a God that can come to me. And he's preaching. And the title of the message was The Isness of God. If you can ever find it on the internet, I promise you, it's worth 45 minutes or an hour of your time. But I'm telling you, aren't you thankful that we can pray? 
man, I, 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 I didn't really bring the light. I just touched on it. But, man, aren't you glad that you and I can come boldly Amen. to the throne of grace? Amen. We were talking today at lunch, and you were recounting the time when they told you you were going to have to have open heart surgery and how you were so nervous and asked if you could just have a few minutes by yourself and, and in a few minutes of prayer. I mean, he knew everything's going to be okay. Amen. You know the great thing about being a Christian? Even if it ain't okay, it's okay. <laughs> amen. I mean, man, we win either way. Aren't you? Amen. If we go or if we stay, we're a winner either way. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. But man, I'm thankful, for, I'm thankful for prayer. Aren't you thankful we've got a God that hears the cries of his people? <laughs> man, it really would have been a bad deal, Brother Clark, if Jesus would have said, hey, don't you see I'm trying to sleep? Don't wake me up. Amen. But the Bible said in verse number 39, and he arose. <laughs> you know what got him to rise? The prayers of his people. Amen. They were nervous. And because they were nervous, they got his attention. Amen. The Bible said, He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. This is amazing to me. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now, now, now look up just verse 37. Just a few verses back, there was a great storm. Amen. There's a storm, Brother Williams, of a magnitude they'd never seen before. And now we go from a great storm to a great calm. Amen. I don't know how it is on the little bays and inlets around here, but I grew up, I grew up in the Chicago area, and my grandfather, as I said, was a sportsman. We fished a lot out on Lake Michigan. And I remember one time my grandfather was, my grandfather was that guy that when the weather was getting bad, he'd say, we're going to make one more pass because we were trolling for salmon or lake trout or whatever. We're going to make one more pass. And, and I remember one time, Brother Jeff, where that one more pass didn't end the way we thought it was going to. And, man, we got caught in a bad storm in a 17-foot boat with, amen, eight-foot seas. And, listen, when, there, when, when the waves are that high and you're in a boat that small, you can't just turn that thing in and fire the motor up head into shore. <laughs> and my grandfather was a, was a, was a, a good seaman, and, he, he, he turned the nose of that boat into the waves, and for hours it seemed like we rode that storm out. I didn't think we was ever going to get home. I really didn't. I was, I, was a, I was probably 10 or 12 years old, and, man, I was scared out of my mind. But my grandfather knew exactly what to do. And I got, I got to thinking about how, how man, it, it, when, when a big body of water like that gets wound up, it takes a long time for it to calm down. Now, we're talking a fairly sizable body of water, the Sea of Galilee. Never been there, but I have seen pictures. Amen. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a map reader, so I know it's a fairly good sized body of water. And I'm telling you, you don't go from a great storm to a great calm in three verses. <laughs> Not unless there's some supernatural power involved in all that. And I'm just trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he spoke and the wind ceased. And he arose and the waves laid down. And that was because of his peace. That's the sixth pillow. Aren't you thankful for the pillow? This world is losing their minds. They're losing their bearings. Trying to, amen, they're, 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 they're requiring that, uh, that we accept, amen, as true what we know to be false and as false what we know to be true. Amen? They're demanding that we do that. They're losing their minds. Trying to justify everything. Isn't it amazing, and again, I'm, I'm just going to say this and move on, observation. That man, when all that Black Lives Matter was going on, that was about time I was in the hospital and they're burning down cities and everything else. And man, everybody, I mean, from, from the news media to entertainment to sports, everybody's like, end hate. And then the Jew comes up. <laughs> now it's all justified. Now we're going we're gonna to side with the Palestinians. Well, we ain't. They are. But I'm telling you, it's all, it's all right here in your book. And if you, just quit, if you just quit looking at the animal network and the alphabet network, amen, and trying to figure things out with the empower your intellect and start reading your Bible, amen. you know what you're going to find? You're going to find the same peace. Right. You ain't going to be all worried, worried and worked up. Sure. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Listen, I, I, I know things look uncertain. I, I get that. Amen? 
But, but, but when, when, when we feel like they're uncertain, it's because we're looking at the wrong thing. Because God is not up in heaven eating Rolades and drinking Maalox trying to figure out how this thing's going to all work out. He is not, man. He is not, he's not chewing his fingernails down to the first knuckle. He's just not. He's got this all under control. And I'm just telling you, if, if, if on a stormy night he can sleep, you and I can sleep. Let me give you the last thing. Verse 40. The Bible said, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? That last pillow is the pillow of praise. And I'll be honest with you, if there's anything that our crowd, the Bible-believing Baptist crowd, is behind on, it's praise. <laughs> We're all, we, we, all, we all up to date on our whining. Amen. We're all up to date on our fussing and telling God how to fix stuff. When's the last time you just sat back and said, Lord, just want to thank you for who you are. Amen. Just want to thank you that, he, that in spite of what I'm facing, I was able to get up this morning. Amen. Now, I was, able to, I, was able to, I was able to process thought. And I was able to, amen, get myself prepared and get myself ready. And yeah, things ain't perfect and things might not be, amen, as we wish they were. But ladies and gentlemen, can I remind you, he is still a God worthy of our praise. Amen. 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 Every breath you've taken today, he's given you. Amen. 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 He's been, while, while we've been enjoying everything he's done He's been, he's been making sure that there's just enough oxygen in our atmosphere to sustain life. Huh. That those two molecules of hydrogen stay bound to that one molecule of oxygen. D do you understand the implications if that ever changed? Amen? Because hydrogen's highly explosive. And oxygen just may, amen, you know, you know hydrogen's highly flammable, and oxygen just makes things flam more. Amen. You add oxygen to anything, it burns hotter. And, and, and the very thing, brother, you, people, people wonder, preacher, how, how in the world at the, end of, at the end of the age God's going to burn the world up with a fervent heat? I'll tell you how he's going to do it. He got, he's got bodies of water full of fuel. I was talking about the Mariana Trench, that, that, the deepest part of the ocean. I don't even have any idea how to calculate, brethren and sisters, how much water gallon wise there is on the face of this earth. But I promise you this, all he's got to do is speak and those two molecules separate and he's got all the fuel to do anything he wants to with. And that same God that, that uses those two elements to, to cause combustion combines those two elements to put it out and to quench our thirst. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, he's a good God. Amen. And we be wise to thank him and we be wise to praise him and we be wise to bless his name. And so let me give these to you again real quick, just in case you missed them. And just in case I neglected to say them, I'll give you there's there's seven of them right here. I said, there's a pillow of his promises. There's a pillow of his presence. There's a pillow of his people. There's a pillow of his power, the pillow of prayer, the pillow of his peace and the pillow of praise. Amen. Amen. And boy, I got to thinking, one of those old songs, Sister Tammy, that, that uh, is not really an old song. It's really a relatively new song. But uh, it's, it, it's, it sounds like one of those old songs. Is your cries have woken the mast. And aren't you thank? That's a, that's a good song, Brother Jeff. Some, somebody ought to learn it and sing it. Amen. And uh, I'm telling you, listen, I'm glad. I'm glad when we cry, preacher, he hears us. I was thinking about this and I'm done. Every parent in here knows the voice of their child. This sister back here on the third row said she came in this morning in, in the Sunday school hour and she recognized me by my voice. She ain't my parent, but here's. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> but, but. But the bottom line is, every, every parent, they, they are tuned to the voice of their, of their child. <laughs> Aren't you thankful, sis, that he knows your voice from Miss Monica's voice, from Sister Tammy's voice, 
from Brother JP's voice. I'm thankful. And, and I'm thankful when I, when I talk to him, I don't have to remind him who I am. Amen. Amen. Every once in a while, I'll get a text on my phone and somebody, I got one just this week. Somebody said, hey, been praying for you. Is there anything else I need? And I didn't recognize the number and I felt really bad because I, I knew if they're praying for me, it's somebody I ought to know. And I said, I'm really sorry, but for some reason, I don't have you in my contact list. And it was a, <clears throat> it was a friend of mine that pastors up in Green Bay, Wisconsin named Scotty Backhouse. And, and uh, I just didn't recognize his number because I didn't have it in my, aren't you glad that, that God never says, uh, uh, who is this? That'd be a really bad deal, wouldn't it? If the Lord said, uh, I don't recognize that voice. And I'm thankful for, for, his, for his pillows. Amen. And in the middle of that storm, he was asleep on a pillow. And he only had one. He's given us seven. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. God, thank you again for your word. Lord, we thank you for its power. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the peace that it gives us. Lord, thank you for your people. And Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we'd ask now, Lord, I, I, I know there are some people here that are facing some storms. God facing uncertain futures. And Lord, the, Lord, the fact of the matter is every, every one of us is facing an uncertain future as far as this world looks at. But Lord, those of us that are saved, Lord, we've got a certain spiritual future. And Lord, we're grateful for that. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd help us, those of us that are facing some difficulty in our life. Lord, there might be somebody here that's facing a family storm or a financial storm or a physical storm. Lord, sometimes those things really take it out of us, Lord, and get us to where our faith begins to waver. And Lord, I pray as our sister comes to the piano and begins to play a hymn of invitation, I just feel compelled, Lord, to open this altar. Lord, I don't know. the. I know a few of the needs, and Lord, I know I got some. But Lord, I, I just got a sneak suspicion that maybe we might need to spend a little time at your feet. Spend a little time at an altar. Just thank you, praise you, bless your name. Let our voice be heard. And so, Father, as your people are moving and coming to the altar, Lord, I pray that, God, you'd meet us and, God, you'd comfort us. And, Lord, you'd help us. Father, I pray that, Lord, we would just respond as you've dealt with us in our heart. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Brother Jeff, let's not sing tonight. Let's just let the Lord move and let people have the opportunity. If you, why don't you stand tonight and make it easier for you to come if you need to come. You won't be by yourself. Why don't you just come and talk to the Lord tonight. Just let him know what your need is and let him know what your burden. Maybe you just need to thank him. Maybe you just need to praise him and and just bless his name and thank him for how good he's been to you. I say bless the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Don't be in a hurry tonight. You just stay as long as the Lord, as long as you need to, to know that he's heard you and you've heard him. I think we can say we've heard from the Lord tonight. I think we can say he's met with us, been kind to pass by our way. Let's not be in a hurry to walk out of his presence tonight.
you know. I really don't know what to say exactly, but uh, I know God is good. And God's got a purpose for each one of us. He's got a purpose for Bethel Baptist Church. Y'all sit down just for a minute. (coughs) And I was thinking about it a while ago. And uh, (coughs) my heart and my desire is to have a church that's alive. Not a dead church. Not a church where there can't be an amen or glory, hallelujah, or praise the Lord, uh, or somebody get excited about it and get up out of their seat and come down and turn around and walk back. (laughs) Whatever, you can't run very far here, so (laughs) you can go out that door and come here and come through that door, you know. I'm I'm not seeking wildfire. I want real fire uh, from heaven in our church and one way that that happens is is through our music uh, I know that uh, the ladies trio sang that song last week actually it's, it was sung Sunday morning and it's sung again Sunday night and I wanted to, and and uh, the Lord just spoke to me about that tonight I said sing, let them get that sing that song you say well why because those songs have life in them. And those songs that help people. Uh, the, both those, the trio and the song Tammy sang. Um, music is, to me, is a big part of the life of a church. Music is supposed to be where it pre- prepares people yes, to hear the preaching. To get people's hearts in tune with God. Uh, to get people tuned in with God in an exciting way, in a real way. Uh, It cannot be real and not be exciting. If it's real, it's exciting. And and I don't want a dead church. I want a live church. And I, I want the freedom to be able to change and say, I want to sing this song, and I want us to do this, and I want us to do that, not because I'm somebody, but because I do want to be led by God for God to be able to do something in people's lives. Amen. And I think that's very important. That's right. And and we all need to be pliable. And uh, and for all you folks that sing and do things, you ought to be ready to sing every time you come to church. It doesn't mean you'll sing every time you come to church, but you ought to be ready. You ought to have a song that's on your heart that you've sung all week long and everything else. And I'm talking about everybody that sings up here. Uh, uh, you ought to be ready. And if and if God moves on my heart and say, ask him to come and sing, you ought to say, okay, I'm ready to go. But if you don't come ready, you're not going to be ready. I hope you all understand. And, and uh, boy, I'm telling you, our, saw, our service in that song service just about got real excited. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I like it. Amen. And uh, I wanted to get here first, but then go to my hand or go to my foot. or, And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but I think there's everything right with it. I think it's wrong for us to people come to church, and we're not excited about it. And like that young man that came to church, yes, he has um, dementia. Uh, not dementia, but autism. autism. Yeah. But he's really, very, very, very smart. He said today at the dinner table, I don't know if y'all heard it or not, he said, we have a problem at work. He said, I can fix it. I can figure it out. He probably can, you know. And and uh, I hope we can get him to come back and Amen. be back more. And, and if we do, we need to love him. Yeah. We just need to love him and let him be a part of our church and let him be welcome here. Amen. And he can come and sing a hymn anytime he wants to. <laughs> and it don't matter. You know, uh, whether he was, well, he did a good job with it. He did, it wasn't off key. He sung it and everything else. Uh, I'm glad that he, he wanted to do that. You know, why some of you don't want to do that? Okay, yeah, I know. Go ahead, on, preacher. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to continue. But my heart is, is full about this and, and, uh, uh, 
whether it's Southern Gospel or what we sing, I don't think we sing anything bad. Uh, but uh, but uh, I like life. God likes life. He's a creator of it. And so uh, I hope you all understand. And I, I thought it was wonderful the way you all were singing and I, the congregational song. I mean, man, it was great. You know, I, I almost ran down the aisle and back and thought, man, this is wonderful. But I didn't do it because I didn't want you to think I was doing something that was a show. And and uh, I don't want to be a show. I don't want to be a put on. Uh, but if God does something in your heart, how do you contain it? How do you not contain it? How do you, you know, not praise God? And and uh, and that's something that the Pentecostals has got over us. You know, they're excited, but yet they're confused about eternal security and everything else. And and they may be heading the wrong direction, but we we've got the right direction. But sometimes we don't have the right fire. You know, and I don't I don't want I want real fire. Uh, I had a preacher preach for us one time. He was he was a big tall Texan, jet black hair, uh, and he was he was an evangelist. His name was Jesse Simon. He worked out in the West uh, Texas oil fields and got saved under a derrick. One day that God struck his heart up there on that oil derrick and said he couldn't get down fast enough. And he he got up preaching. And he was preaching in our church one time. And we had a door here outside and a door here outside and the back door. He got so excited about preaching about Jesus, he ran out that door. And you could hear him every time he passed the window <laughs> and, and just a shouting and praising God. And he'd come all the way down, come back up at the pulpit and just kept on preaching. <laughs> I think he thought there wasn't nobody there but him. <laughs> we need a great deal of that. We have. So, anyway, I just want God to do it. And not, not me, not anybody else, but God. But God has chosen to use people. If we don't get a big head, we don't think we're something. We just want, when people come to church, they say, man, there's something about that church. And I hope it's not about us. I hope it's about Jesus. And that's what it ought to be. We ought to be excited about him. My wife has never shouted in her life, but I just bet you 10 cents she's been shouting ever since she stepped on the other side. <laughs> she's not herself anymore. <laughs> so, but anyway, anybody want to say anything? Amen. That's right. That's why I said the other day that let's don't call it our little church. Uh, if God is in it, it's a big church because God is big. And he's not too big to be in a little church <laughs> or a small group of people. Anybody else? I know it's later than usual, so. Okay. Brother Rising. That's what the missionaries say, you know. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Somebody else raised. Okay, Jeff. Speak out loud now. <laughs> Amen.
messed up. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Amen. <coughs> Amen. One thing I want to give a note of caution when things are going well we better pay attention because the devil knows it too and he'll do anything he can to get a wedge in and we need to be aware of that and swallow our pride and admit our wrong when we meet when it's there and recognize who is behind it all the trouble that we have as a child of God the devil's behind it God allows it sometimes, but the devil wants to stop us. He don't want us to be victorious and live a happy, joyful Christian life. Anybody else want to say? Okay, Brother Rick. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. That's exactly right. <coughs> but let's be wary of the devil. Okay. He shows his head, do something to stop it. Preacher, I, you I know. will say, I've got friends all around the country, and I've got a lot of friends that, that are very rabid, not the right word, but that's just a descriptive word, they're very rabid in church. And I know y'all are, you know, oh, you're yeah. Alabama fans, and I get all that. <coughs> i got a lot of friends that the big game yesterday that everybody talks about was Bishop Lee Powell's game. And I didn't get a chance to watch it because I, I had some other stuff going on today. But I, I know that the people that went there that were, that were Mississippi fans didn't mind identifying with their team. No, they didn't. And they wore the jersey, and they wore the, the navy blue, <coughs> and the people that were on Hey Man wore the red and white, and the Buckeyes, and the whole deal. And it seems like... <laughs> this, <laughs> what? <laughs> Linda, yeah, she, she was doing this. <laughs> They don't mind at all. 
Matter of fact, they're rabid about it. Absolutely. That's why I use that word. They're rabid about it. And you and I are on the winning side. Amen. It's bigger than the Iron Bowl. It's bigger than the game. It's bigger than the Super Bowl. And yet we just sit here like, oh, my, my. Things are great. Amen. We need to stop that. We need to quit that. You know? I like I like the song, We're on the Winning Side. Do you all like it? <coughs> Let's sing it. I don't know. I, I've forgotten all the words, but I, I can get some of them. How's it go? <coughs> on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. And there's been no more. Will abide. I've been listed in the fight for the cause of truth and right. <laughs> And praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Love and sin, no more will I abide. Boy, that's a good song. I've been listed in the fight for the cause of truth and right. And praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. That kind of creates a little excitement in church. And that's what I've been wanting to do uh, without being looking stupid. Uh, but I, I want us to be excited about the Lord Jesus Christ and about the Bible and about the, the, what God has done for us. We ought to be excited about it, and we ought not be ashamed to sing it. Amen. 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 Uh, <coughs> turn to 478 and let's end the church service on that. I still don't know it completely, but I'm trying. Winning side. Come on, y'all stand up. We're going to end with this. Moses led God's children through the years he led them through the cold and through the night. Though they said, let's turn back. Moses said, let's keep <laughs> The land is just inside. Come on, lift it up. There will be no borrow there. We'll be tomorrow. We will be there by and by. And milk and honey flowing there is where I'm going. Canaan land is just inside. Sing the second verse. Though we walk through valleys, though we climb high mountains, we must not give up the fight. We must be like Moses. We must keep on going. Canaan land is just All right, lift it up. There will be no sorrow there in that bright sorrow. We will be there by and by. Milk and honey flowing where, where I'm going. Canaan land is just inside. All of God's people said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord been a blessing to be in church tonight and and uh, thank you brother skipper uh, for coming and helping us today and even though he's struggling uh, we sure need to pray for him uh, as they go up to northern uh, uh, indiana uh, and uh, on the to get the test and everything about everything and 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 it's not something that's just it's a dangerous thing and it's a serious thing and he's he tries to make light of it a little bit, but uh, uh, but it is very serious, and we surely need to uh, bombard heaven uh, that God would use him and keep him going. And I'd like to, for him to come back next year too, and and to be here. Uh, he's been a blessing to me today, and I hope he's been a blessing to you. And even had to sit on the stool. Uh, that's okay, uh, but if you got God on you, it don't matter. And and uh, that was great today, Brother Skipper, and we appreciate it. And his wife, 
who faithfully helps him and does what she can and gets on him and everything else, you know. There's no woman that's silent to her husband at home. <laughs> you know that, don't you? Well, anyway, we're going to, it's, it's what, it's 6.30? <laughs> Still early. <laughs> what I should have done is had Brother Lev come and preach, and then Brother Williams preach, and then Brother Skipper finished it. And we, we might be raptured to heaven if that all happens, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and then maybe Brother Risinger could say it a little bit, you know. <laughs> and I'm just kidding. Let's be dismissed in, in prayer. And uh, Byron, I'm going to ask you to dismiss us tonight. Is he in here? Or? <clears throat> all right. You close us in prayer. Amen.